guys and welcome back to another reaction video with Tanoko one um, per request this time. Um, I don't actually remember the name of the episode. <laughs> yes, I know I'm a terrible person. It was um, episode 11 of season 11 uh, where we've just come back from the hiatus and like I said, I don't remember the name of the episode. I really liked the episode. Um, I'm a big fan of Cassifer. Uh, I am. It's horrible. I'm a terrible person. I love Lucifer. I'm, I'm just, yeah. Yeah, this is gonna end in pain and tears. I just know it. It's gonna, uh, yeah. But anyways, I'm gonna be answering your questions. Again, you are always more than welcome to either request for me to do more reaction videos or submit questions regarding Supernatural and for me to do answer question sessions. Um, like this and I will always be more than happy to do them if you're interested. Um, you can submit questions either in the comments below or you can submit them on my tumblr at tumblr uh, tanoka1.tumblr.com slash ask. Enjoy. Anon said, can we talk about the awesome female characters? Dude. Dude. <laughs> I ship Eileen and Sam like that. Like, it happened. It just, it, I was like, mm -hmm, she's adorable. Let's keep this one. And then just, oh, God. She was so cute. And she's a deaf hunter. Do you get how awesome that is? She's literally hunting monsters with only four of her senses available to her. She has a huge, massive, freaking blind spot, figuratively speaking. You know, like, can you imagine hunting monsters and you can't hear it coming up behind you or if it's around the corner? I mean, dude, and she does this. I'm like, she's boss. She just... Yeah, she, mm -hmm. I like her. I like her a lot. And then she's just so cute. And then she, she she's thinking about going to law school and she's helping Sam with his son. I ship it. I ship it. I, I'm not even gonna lie, dude. They're cute. They're adorable. And she's a legacy too. She's adorable. I just, I like her. I'm like, okay, I shipped Sam Sarah for years and they brought her back and killed her off. If they kill off this girl, I will be pissed. <laughs> I will literally be livid. Seriously, if none of my other ships can become canon or ever will be, I just, I just. They like to hurt us. They like to cause us pain. That or they just don't know how to make you happy. Um, why, why, why? Yeah. Um, another question that they asked was the amazingness of, of Sam bringing up and apologizing for the fact that he didn't look for Dean while Dean was in purgatory. I wasn't as impressed by this. Everybody else was like, oh my god, that's so amazing. They finally made up. And, you know, no. Not so much. Not for me. Um, one, because I have a serious headcanon that Amelia and the dog never existed. Um that they're literally, Sam had a mental breakdown and they were hallucinations, um, that his brain conjured up in order to keep him out of the hunter lifestyle. Cause think about it. Um, and his brain's like, nope, sorry, you can't, you can't. Seriously, dude, we are going to break and shatter if you don't step back and heal. And so, cause it's, it was a complete out of character thing for Sam to one, not look for his brother, to get all these calls from Kevin and not chase after him knowing the kids calling him hey I need help and him just to not and and just like and then there were so many literal parallels as far as far as Amelia and the dog as there were to like say things with Dean and Lisa I mean like the picnic I mean you could literally lay some of these scenes one scene over another and they were exact replicas um so I personally think it was Sam's brain it, Sam's brain, Sam's brain way of coping. Sam's brain's way of coping. <laughs> Sam's brain was trying to cope. And um, <laughs> if I could make words, that would help. Um, and literally, it's its only way of making sure he stayed sane and so it could finish healing. Because with all this stress from season seven, it probably did, wasn't too kind on him. And then he's already traumatized and PTSD and all this other kind of junk. And, um... I literally think Amelia and all of them, and I kept waiting in season eight for it to come out. Okay, yeah, she's not real because literally nobody but Sam ever sees her or the dog, ever, except for like the first season, first episode when he runs into both of them. I figured the dog probably actually died. And Amelia is a person, a real person, but she was the vet who treated the dog and the dog died. And that was it with his interaction with her. Um, because Dean never sees her, nobody else ever sees her. 
Um, and Lucifer only sees her in the episode is because it's a memory of Sam's that he's running him through. Um, so he's never actually seen her either. And again, I just, I, I don't think she was real. I think Sam had a mental breakdown. I think Sam had a serious mental breakdown. So I didn't really care about the fact that, like, you know, Sam and Dean were fighting over the fact that, you know, um, how does he put it in the episode about, um, you left me for a freaking girl? And I was just like, okay, that episode really hurt. Um, but at the same time, I just didn't really think anything of it because I'm pretty 98% sure that Sam was just having a mental breakdown. Amelia doesn't exist. And you can't really blame him. You can't really blame him for his brain being broken. Um, not really his fault. His life is screwed up. He's traumatized. He's been through, he, Sam Winchester's been through some stuff, okay? He, he's, he's allowed a couple of mental breakdowns. Midlife crises, whatever. Next question. What about Lucifer infiltrating the bunker? This is very interesting to me because Okay, the whole episode starting at the beginning, you have you have Lucifer in the park feeding ducks. Uh, but it's it's almost like he's literally just enjoying, oh my god, I'm free. Um, oh my dad. You know, I'm out of the cage. <laughs> this is amazing. And he just, literally just seems to be reveling in it. I mean, he's at a freaking park watching kids play on the playground and then goes for, like, you know, realizes, okay, I, I've been, I've been made. And he's like, okay, so we're just gonna go over here where the kids can't see and I'm gonna gank him in the woods. I'm gonna talk to him at first, and then I'm gonna gank him. And um, I actually had some difficulty watching the beginning of this episode because I couldn't get a good picture. I use rabbit ears. Um, I'm not paying for cable, dude. <laughs> Money don't grow on trees. I'm not paying for basic channels. Um, so I have rabbit ears, and which means sometimes I don't get the best signal. So I was having a little bit of difficulty at the beginning of the episode. Um. I got much better signal when my Christmas tree was up. <laughs> it acted like a super antenna. Um, and so, it, like, I didn't even get part of the conversation with Lucifer and the angel, but, like, literally, Lucifer again is, brother, I don't want to hurt you. Um, what he's ultimately up to, I'm not sure, but we'll find out. We will find out. Um, and then you get where he's actually in the bunker going through their information you know, looking for lore on Amara. And I'm just like, is he actually keeping up his end of the deal? Because, no offense, the previous writers have completely tried to break that canon as far as Lucifer keeps his word and, you know, doesn't lie. So that's kind of a problem right now. But I love the fact that, like, he's there and Dean walks in and he's like, Cass, what the... And everyone can, you can tell Lucifer's like, ah, crap. And he's like, get into character, get into character, get into character. Hello, Dean. <laughs> <laughs> and so then it's just like, yes, this amuses me. And you can tell he's kind of struggling at first because he's like, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's like, I'm just like, not really. That's what you would say, right? That's totally what you would say, Cass. You with me here? Yeah, that's totally what you would say. I'm sorry. <laughs> and so it amused me deeply. Um, but like I said, I think he might actually be keeping up his end of the deal. Um, as far as helping them, you know, but why would he think they would have anything on him or on her when they had to come to him for help? <laughs> so I'm not really sure. Maybe he's trying to think, okay, you know, she's in human form now. She's different than what he expected, you know, so he's not really sure what the is going on. And, um, and so maybe he's trying to figure out, okay, what have they learned and all this time I've been locked up and the darkness has been locked up that might be, make this more easy or may, might make this easier. Um, because last time I had a lot more help and this time it's mostly going to be me. So I'm not really sure. Alternatively, there is the option that Lucifer, for whatever reason, wants to join forces with Amara, which would make no sense because she would totally not go for that because she hates angels and she definitely hates him because he's the reason she got locked up to begin with. So that's not going to go over well. So I don't think why he would even try that route. And you know, that we can work together to take down God. No, mm -mm, that's going to end badly. He's up to something. You know he's up to something. He's Lucifer. I think he's going to be a problem. Amara's going to be a problem. And I'm not even sure what kind of problem Amara's going to be. He's just like... 
I'm still not sure what the frack is going on with that storyline. Um, but we'll find out. Now, as far as Dean pining, because that is, that has been a topic of discussion. Who is he pining? Is he pining for Cass? Is he pining for Amara? No, 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 blah, 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 blah. Here's the thing. In which case, also with pining, pining is generally longing for somebody you can't have. Or, you know, um, longing for something that is completely and utterly unavailable to you. Dean can't really pine for Amara. It doesn't make any sense. Um, yes, he wants her and he is longing for her, but he's also, it's, it's more like a druggie for a hit. Um, their relationship is not romantic in any sense. And he already knows that literally she has full control over him. Um, that he can't help himself when it comes to her. Um, and that is the effect of her. It's not that he actually has feelings for her. It's just basically like all the other people um, that get blissed out or addicted to her. He's it's it's, it's almost like a Sam Ruby Sam Ruby parallel, um, except now Dean is the demon blood junkie, um, and Amara is his dealer. Um, except rather than you know needing demon blood, he just needs to be around her, you know, constantly. It's it's an all consuming desperation. And it freaking terrifies him because he knows it's not his own feelings. He knows it's not natural. Um, he doesn't want it, um, but he still feels it, you know? So it's, it's, it's really, it's, it's screwed up. It's, it's very, very, it's unhealthy. It's unconsensual. It's unsafe. It's not sane. You know, it's bad. It's, it's really, really screwed up. And, um, I mean, there is nothing healthy or romantic about this pairing. What's so freaking ever. Um, not to mention that for, like, half the season, she was a child. We're not forgetting that, okay? We're not forgetting it. We're not letting it go. Literally, he held her in his arms when she was a baby. I mean, just... Um, so much disturbing. Ugh, God. And so, you know, but at the same time, is Dean pining? Yeah, I, I think he is. Um, he's... Part of him is longing for... Amara, because that is the way it is designed. Um, and then part of him is longing for the actual a long-term life. He is wanting to grow old. He's wanting a home. He's wanting, you know, to make space in his life for one another person, which is actually repeatedly brought up given the dynamic, the, the, the cinematography of different shots. Like the fact that when Sam goes to bed, Sam takes up his whole bed. There's literally no room in his bed for somebody else. Um, there's there's nothing at all homey about his room at all. Dean is the complete utter opposite. Dean is, the bunker is home for him. His room is home for him. Um, when he sleeps in his bed or lies on his bed, there's usually, he sleeps more to one side of it. And there's usually a space almost as if he's waiting for somebody else's other side of the bed. These things aren't done accidentally. I mean, seriously, do you know how much time and effort goes into every shot on these shows? The lighting, the, the, the marking, the, you know, they probably reshoot things over and over again because Dean, no, I need you to move over like six inches this way and move your arm and make more space this way. You know, just seriously, like everything they do is scripted. I think Dean is pining. I think he's pining and sort of not necessarily pining for, for, for Amara, but he's longing for her and the pool is apparently getting stronger, the stronger she gets. Um, you know, and it's, it's, it's pretty bad. Um, and so I think this is going to end up actually being pretty bad. Um, I actually think Dean and Cass are going to be sort of each other's salvations this season. Um, so, but we'll see. And basically it's going to take their bond with each other to break the bonds that they have currently with other people. Um, you know, so we'll see. Where do you think Cass's consciousness is now that he's given himself to Lucifer? I'm not sure. I'm really not sure. 
Because when Gadriel was possessing Sam, he had Sam thinking he was just living his normal life and that nothing had changed, everything was normal. Sam was working cases with his brother. And knowing Lucifer, that's a very interesting idea. Um, either he could be kind and literally just keep Cass asleep. That or he could be being horribly, horribly cruel. Um, and basically giving Cass everything he wants and everything he's been wanting, you know, secretly or openly and none of it's real. In which case, in, in, in Lucifer's mind, he may be, 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 may be being very kind. Um, it's his attempt at generosity. Um, in which case, of course, when it comes to an end, it's going to hurt a lot. Um, kind of like a gen. Think gen. Or Cass could be completely aware of everything Lucifer is doing, you know, and he's just screaming in the background that are going, what are you doing feeding ducks? I am so confused. You possessed me so you could feed ducks? <laughs> I, I didn't say yes to you for this. Go fight the darkness. Um, you know, save the world. You know, it's, it's, this could go any way, in which case if Lucifer does turn out to be evil, it's, it's going to be a Star Wars moment where like, you know, you were the chosen one. You were supposed to bring balance to the force. I'm just, and I'll just be so disappointed. I'll never give up on Lucifer, though. I'm still always going to have hope for him. I just, I want so much better for him than he wants for himself. Darn it. <laughs> Anon said, I wish Cassifer was in every episode. I do too. Because, oh my God, it's just, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Good times. And I, I also, I also want, um, Misha, not Misha. Well, yes, Misha. Um, I want Cass arguing with Cassifer. Um, like, you have, like, a, um, where in the past we've had, um, Sam arguing with Sam, we've had Dean arguing with future Dean, you know, in all these different scenes where there's two versions of the character in the same room with each other. I want that for Cass, um, but, like, literally it's, it's Cass and Lucifer, I guess, talking in his head. Um, that or either, you know, where Cass is, is present and aware of what is going on at all times, and he's, and he's, they're showing it like Cass is in the room because he's seeing what's going on. And then, you know, Lucifer or Cassifer will say something to Cass, which nobody else hears because this is internal. Their whole conversations are internal, um, even though they're in the room with other people. That would be very hard to shoot, but it'd be very interesting. Yeah. And then, of course, you know, you always have the, um, the horrible, awful, terrible possibility of Lucifer using Castiel's feelings as a weapon, because that's what he does. He doesn't need to lie because the truth is much more powerful. And, you know, basically, if he ever does turn against Dean and Sam, you know, using Castiel's feelings as a weapon, you know, he's in love with you, you know, you know basically. And, um, because that's just what he does. <laughs> it's just, he's horrible. I love him. He's awful. <laughs> I wish he was in every episode, but I know it's going to end badly. And I also want Cass back, you know, because I want, I want Cass and Dean to make up and for things to be okay between them and them to fix things and for Cass to be safe. So while I love Cassifer, I also want Cass back and Lucifer to be Mark Pellegrino again because, <laughs> you know, that, 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 that's, that makes me feel better and more comfortable and, and less like my poor baby is going to die. <laughs> Stop hurting Cass. Okay. Anon asked, doesn't Lucifer being on Earth create a bigger problem? It was the whole reason behind season five and the apocalypse. What could Castiel have thought would come of him saying yes? Here's the thing. I think Lucifer is scared. Like, literally. Okay, this is, this is, is this an angel who, one, waits for how many years for Sam and Dean to be born just so he would have a shot at getting out? And then have a shot at getting Sam to say yes to him so he could have a vessel, so he could fight Michael. I mean, this is a patient angel, okay? Then he gets out and Sam is like, no, 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 no. And he's like, that's cool. That's fine. I can wait. It's okay. Take your time. You'll say yes eventually. You won't have any other options because, hey, this is going to, the, the bad things are coming. And, you know, you're going to run out of options and you will eventually say yes because there's literally nothing else to do. You know, it will be the only option left to you, and I can wait for that. Um, you know, th that that is the Lucifer we are used to. 
Um, and then we have Lucifer this season, who won when the darkness gets out, apparently threw a fit, freaking out to the point that the other demons were scared. Um, and then literally when is, is trying very hard to convince Sam to say yes to him. Um, which was beautiful. Oh my god, so much flirting. So much flirting. It was so cute. Ah, uh, yeah, I'm a shipper. I ship it hard. Um, don't judge me. Seriously. Don't even. You know you- no, don't- don't start with me. Like I said, I completely am all into redemptive Lucifer storylines, so, ah, uh, yeah. I just want them to end up the most world's unlikely of friends and save the world and become super lawyers together and just, oh, uh, yeah. Um, so anyways, I think they're cute. Um, except for when Lucifer is being a dick. Um, so when Lucifer ends up being told no by Sam and then it's, it's almost like he got slapped. It, his reaction is very extreme and it was, um, it, you can tell he's taken aback and he doesn't know how to respond. And so he like freaks out. Um, and basically starts to beat the crap out of Sam, which is not, we've seen his previous behavior. I think Lucifer's scared. And that's very interesting to me because holy crap, Lucifer is scared and freaking out. That's bad. That's really bad. <laughs> this is fascinating, but that's bad. This is, oh dear. Okay. Oh, that, that's going to end well. That's going to end well. And so, yeah. And so I'm, I'm, I'm actually very curious about that. You know, the fate of the world rests on his shoulders at this point. Yeah. Just seriously, seriously. The, the fate of the world. Lucifer. Fate of the world. Oh boy, we're in trouble. <laughs> um, so yeah. And yeah. And, and Cass, God love him, Cass is so broken and so dejected and, and, and traumatized and he has PTSD and poor baby's messed up, you know, he's just, he is, he's, he's been through some crap, you know, it, for seasons after season after season, he is literally somebody's plaything, you know, or their puppet or something, you know. And it seems like every time he tries to do something, somebody else uses it against him. Or they either, you know, manipulate him in some way. So, and he thinks he's a tool to be used and that the Winchesters don't actually care what happens to him. Um, it, which, that was the whole point, narrative point, is the fact that as he keeps being told that he's expendable and that he's not worth nothing, the audience is screaming and getting mad about the fact that, like, excuse you, uh, no, um, and just, like, getting irate because you wait till Dean, you know, it's like, you wait till Dean hears this dude, he's gonna, like, punch everybody in the face and start stabbing angels. It's, it's kind of what he does. Um, and we'll stab you in the face. And, and, and so, the point of Cass feeling like he is expendable and worthless is the fact that he's not. And, but he has to get to that point to be shown the gravity of which, you know, the worth he holds, um, both in the world and then both in the world and to the Winchesters and more specifically, probably to Dean because of the way the story is going, the way they're sort of paralleling each other. Um, and the story seems actually more focused on Dean and Cass this season. Which, thank God, um, because Cass actually has his own plotline and is, uh, I've missed good writing for them. Um, yeah, seriously. I think, I think Cass is just in a really, really bad spot, um, mentally. And, you know, he's not had the time to heal. And so he's just, uh, it's just bad. It's just, it's, it's bad all around, you know, and it's going to take basically hitting rock bottom to get back up and, you know, and fix it and realize, you know, how wrong he was. And I think literally it's getting to the point the Winchesters are going to have to retire. Um, that the world is safer with them retired. Um, and basically handed off to the next generation. 
which is great because if we get Wayward Academy um, or, you know, Wayward Daughters, the next generation, it'll be fabulous. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Next question by the Anon was, I can't get over Dean taking Viagra. Just how? Why? How? I think some stuff Dean just does and it's, it's, one, he's either trying to be funny, um, or even just to himself, because it amused him. Um, you know, because I'm going to chuckle out of that for a while. Um, and then, you know, two, I think sometimes it's just old habits, you know, that he's just like, be yeah, okay, <laughs> take the Viagra. <gasps> Go find every random, you know, hookup you can, even though he hasn't done that in years. Um, you know, it's been years since Dean was constantly finding hookups. Thank God almighty. Um, God, I was sick of that behavior. Ugh. Just ugh. You know, no, we want him in a happy, healthy, normal relationship. Thank you. Preferably with Castiel. Because, and seriously, the, the Dean Amara thing, they can't pair him with Amara. There's literally no possibility for a relationship there. Even if it weren't completely, you know her doing the mind whamming on him. She's the bad guy. You know, th there's there's no way they could end up together. So there's no way they're in game. So that just, it makes no sense. Yes, they're pairing them together. But like, again, it's a completely, you know, unsafe, insane, unhealthy, toxic, you know, non-consensual relationship that they have going on. It, 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 that's... So yeah, Dean and Amara, there's no way they could be in game. That's so rapey. So, so rapey. Um, that, I'm not saying that means that Dean and Cass are in game either. Um, God, I wish they were. I just want them happy and healthy and together, you know, and for the three of them to retire and pass on, you know, hunter status to the next generation. Um, and for them to just, you know, sideline it and become the new Bobbies. Like, people come to them for research, but they're not allowed to get involved. Like, under strict rules, you are not allowed to get involved. Um, the world is safer if you don't. <laughs> I know it's about to end, but it's still safer if you don't get involved. Um, so, but we'll see. And let's see. That was my last question. Um, like I said, I enjoyed the episode. Um, I actually missed the first few minutes of it, but whatever. Um, I really loved the fact that we had a, um, a, a deaf character on there. Um, I like the fact that she and Sam are so freaking adorable. Um, they're so cute. Um, I liked the fact that we're getting, you know, Dean's going to have to be honest with himself. Dean's having to be honest with himself. Um, Dean, unfortunately, was honest with Castiel, except it wasn't Cass, and Lucifer's probably, Lucifer isn't so much, you know, I don't think Lucifer is wanting to use that necessarily as a weapon, but it's information, and he needs all the information he can get on Amara, because this Amara is different than how he faced her, and so he needs to know everything he can, which is, I think, exactly what he tells him, tell me everything. You know, because that is what he needs to know. He needs to know what he's up against. He needs to know what he's dealing with. He needs to know how things have changed, how the game has changed, you know, because Lucifer is a strategist. Um, so, but I really enjoyed the episode. I'm very much looking forward to the next episode. Okay, in case you didn't see it, Jim Michaels on Twitter. Jim Michaels is one of the executive producers of the show. Um, he has very much heavily hinted at the fact that if we get a rating spike for the next episode, that's the one with Claire and Alex and Jody, um, that Wayward Daughters could become a thing. That it could actually become, you know, we could get that spinoff. So, you know, I don't care if you like Supernatural anymore or if you've stopped watching years ago and you just basically keep up with it through people's reaction videos like this and things you see online. Freaking turn on your TV and watch it. I'm not playing with you. <laughs> you know, get your grandma to turn it on and watch it. Even if they're not in the room, I want every TV you know of to be on and on this channel so we can get this show. I mean, seriously, come on. Do you want Supernatural to end or do you want to continue on through a spinoff? I mean, come on. Especially a girl run one. Just, oh, God, yes. 
you know, where they're not there to, to, to promote the man pain and, and the bromance and, and, or to be the, you know, the random hookup for the episode. Do you know how sick we get of seeing that? Especially as the female audience, and we're the majority of the audience. I mean, come on, people, people, work with me here. Just watch it, or turn on your TV. You don't even have to watch it. Just, like, because it's going to be awesome. It's going to be Claire, it's going to be Alex, it's going to be Jody. And, um, it's going to be great. And I'm so excited, and I so hope we get that spinoff. And just, I love all the actresses, and, and everybody involved, and this is going to be amazing, and I'm just going to be a screaming, squeeing mess. It's just... I'm, <laughs> yeah it's gonna be great i hope you enjoyed this i hope this was fun and entertaining for you and not boring um like i said if you would enjoy please leave a comment below you can also submit questions for another video um or anything like that you can submit questions uh in the comments or you can go over to my tumblr again tonoko1.tumblr. uh tonoko1.tumblr.com slash ask and you are more than welcome to submit a question there. Bye!